My friends, we have stepped into the year 2024, which kind of leads to the question that this video is about. Do you still need a studio right now? And if you notice, and you're kind of looking around, you might notice that the background that I have is very different. And it's not the first time that that's happened. Um, you guys have seen me in different places. I had my studio at that time, but going into the new year just didn't make sense for me anymore. And I kind of want to get into that in this episode and explain to you guys a bit about my personal life and how I think that it might help you guys in your journey. Because just like you, when I first started, my thoughts were all focused on mixing, mastering, recording bands, engineering, like the idea of having a studio with a full facility, a live room, a lobby, a control room, everything at your fingertips so that you look legit, even more so so that you feel legit, right? So that you can show it off to everyone. Hey, mom, dad, I succeeded. It's like being in a magazine or having a song on the radio, right? It's these little milestone markers that prove to other people that we're somebody. But in reality, I wanna talk about what happened while I was at that studio. Last year, I recorded drums five times in the entire year. And that studio cost me about $20,000. $20,000 just for a live room when the control room that I have is really what? a desk and a rack and a couch. That's the control room. That, what's the difference from having that in a room in my house, which is what I'm doing now? Because I think that's the smarter way to go about it. And forget the $20,000 I had to pay for rent because everyone has to pay for rent, right? Let's talk about what it took for me to actually record drums and use that live room for it to make sense. Because why have the studio if not to record live drums? My SSL Logic EQs, $5,000. My SSL Logic compressors, another $5,000. That's $10,000 right there. SSL preamps, um, another $1,000. Two Chandler Germanium preamps, $2,500. API 3124, $3,400. The list goes on. There's so many things that just keep on adding. And that's not even talking about my drum kit. I have a Tama Birch Babinga kit, and I have all the Zildjian cymbals and all the microphones for it. And you know when you start getting into pencil condenser, you know. You know how that gets. And the numbers just kept adding up for me until where I couldn't find where it made sense. I came to the realization that I had $40,000 of just drum recording equipment. Distressors, pre's, okay, there's two channels of those. Like, I understand those make sense to keep no matter what. But when it comes to drums, do I need eight EQs? Do I need eight compressors? Do I need 20 preamps? No, you don't. And you start to realize that you don't have the highest quality of the one thing you want when you're focused on something like that. So with vocals, instead of just having one pretty good preamp, if you didn't have to worry about those other 20 channels, you could have a really nice preamp or a really nice compressor or a really nice EQ, you know what I mean? You start spreading your money really thin when you have to break it up that way. The next things I wanna get now that I'm just gonna be doing vocals and mainly guitars and stuff is I wanna get a CL1B, I wanna get a Telefunken Elam 251. I know that's crazy, those things are like, what, $20,000, but, but I want one. And now I might have the option of actually being able to afford some stuff like that. I know it sounds ridiculous, but a couple years from now, I'd like to have one in my collection. So one, yes, positive thing, I do have more money now. And I don't have to go to the studio to work on what I wanna work on. Other things happened while I was here too. Besides having this all in just my room, I also built a vocal booth downstairs that looks way nicer than any vocal booth that I've ever seen before personally. A little small, but it looks very aesthetically pleasing. And I built that by hand. And now I can record anything that I want and not have to worry about having other people using the live room or having other people next door making noise to where I can't record because that's another thing when you share a building with people. It's really cool to have something like a solid state logic EQ because you know, it has all the like bells and whistles and there's a bell that I need you guys to hit. Make sure you tap that notification bell Give this video a like if you're enjoying it. And of course, hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Because we're on our way to 100,000 subscribers this year. It has been a long haul. When I started this, we were at around 20. And now we are well on our way to hitting the big 100. So thank you all for that. Can we get a little clap for everybody that has been here following along with us this entire time? 
Just want you to know we love you guys. And if you want, follow me on Instagram, by the way, at uh, Still Evaluating. You know, if you're a Reaper boy, you know where that is. That handle, when I started that in my mind, I was like, sickest thing ever. No one's ever gonna top this. But back to this concept. Yes, those are some of the positives, but let's talk about some negatives, right? Now, you don't have that place that refuge to where you can escape your home life. You don't have a place for a bunch of people to come to and hang out and feel like they're in a musical environment the same way. And also you can't record drums and stuff. But where I'm at right now, between using the Kemper, the load boxes, I'm not worried about reamping things or about playing guitar. I am getting an ISO box so that I can record guitars with cabs if I want to and I don't have to be anywhere to do that. It was just a really crazy thing when I started crunching the numbers. Like I could have went and recorded at the greatest studios in the world the five times I recorded drums and still have probably had an extra like $30,000, $40,000. To put it short to you guys, the math was not mathing. So certain times you have to look in your life and see, is it time for a change? Have you been stuck in a loop to where you're holding on to something that maybe you shouldn't. And I want to explain that's another thing about having my studio. When I got it, the place was just four walls. There was no really nice live room. There was no anything. I'm going to show you guys pictures of all this stuff. Me and Josh, a friend of mine in the other room, we decided we wanted to redo the whole thing. So we did that. I had to do my room. I had to do stuff to the lobby. There was, there was just nothing really happening there. But once you build it and you take all that time and you start flushing it out, you really want to be a part of it because now you feel like it's home. That's where you get trapped and you get stuck. If I was on the outside looking into my situation probably a year ago, I would have left and I would be able to have all the things that I want to do. Now, I know I'm going to be focusing a little bit more on getting some mastering equipment because I've wanted to do that for a long time. And I'm going to be back into doing a lot of vocal recording with some really high quality gear because I've wanted to do that for a long time. I lost sight of stuff. I lost sight of what really got me into this. I'm a singer. You guys know this, right? I'm a singer. I'm a songwriter. And getting into that engineering phase and trying to keep up with everyone else and be like, oh, like, look at this gear that I have, whatever. At the end of the day, 99% of people can't even hear the difference between the EQ you're using in hardware or the one that you're using in the box. And plugins for me, I mean, obviously Joey Sturgis tones and all that, right? Plugins save lives over here and time and money. And I'm definitely gonna be focusing a lot more on that. You'll be seeing me doing a lot more stuff with our plugins, which it's kind of weird that I don't do a ton of that on the channel, but I'm gonna be showing off more of our stuff this year. Um, showing you guys a little bit more how to use it effectively if you're having problems struggling with that. And I'm gonna really be upping my content game in general. And I wanna start streaming this year. You know, doing live stuff with you guys and having fun. And I didn't have the time to think about that because all I was doing every single month was thinking, how am I paying for this studio another month? How am I going to keep this place running? This thing that was built how do I now keep that engine chug, chug, chugging along? And it's a sad thing when you have to walk away from it, but I promise you guys this. When I stepped out of that studio room, after I took everything off the wall, I walked through the spot and heard all the flutter echoes that were going on that I specifically treated when I had my stuff in there, saw the paint coming down. I saw and I just realized this just wasn't it for me. And you guys, you guys know I'm doing a lot of content. Now, if I was just tracking bands all day long, then yeah, sure. It might make sense for me to do that and stay in a studio like that. But how many of us are actually doing that every single day? I mean, if you are, that's great. And I've been there, I did it for a year, but I feel like as we get a little bit older, we kind of start really focusing on the projects that we absolutely love and we put all of our energy into that. And that's what I really wanna focus on this year. Putting my all into every single piece of music I touch and thinking about quality over quantity. Because you know, this content game, trying to hit the algorithm, trying to do all that stuff, like you're gonna keep on doing that, but what are people going to remember down the line? So back to the original thought, do you need a studio in 2024? Depends on the person. 
but I want you to take a good hard look at your life and I want you to think about your finances. And I want you to think about whether you have children, maybe you have a partner that you might be able to focus a little bit more attention on, or maybe you would be able to travel if you weren't sitting here putting all your money into that. I don't know. I, I wish somebody would have given me this wake up call because when I told everybody that I was like, guys, I'm leaving the studio, I'm getting out of here. Everyone was like, oh dude, that makes sense. Yeah, get out of there, man. What are you doing? And I'm just like, what am I doing? What have I been on? audio is crazy it will put you in this mindset because you've been chasing something since you were younger probably since the first time that you started trying to record yourself and you wanted to be the greatest you wanted to be chris lord algae you wanted to be joey sturgis you wanted to be adam d you wanted to leave your sonic footprint in the world because music's a beautiful thing and we all understand that. I never knew when I was picking up a guitar or singing karaoke that one day I was gonna be a YouTuber or that I was gonna be making content. That was never in my mind. I just always thought, man, I'm going to put my music out and do all this stuff. And you know what? I've been doing a lot less of that because I've been so focused on just making money, just trying to keep the train going, trying to pay rent at two places while still having to worry about my kids and get them to school on time and get them Christmas presents and just being a parent. And I, I know some of you guys are parents too, so I know you understand what I'm saying. So yeah, 2023, thinking about it, it was a good year, but mainly because it was a year of revelation for me and a year to understand what I have to do to move forward. And I promise you guys, this year, the stuff that I make is going to be the greatest thing that I possibly can do because that is the energy that I'm going into this year with. I'm glad that I was able to speak freely with you guys. And I feel like a lot of the time I don't do that. I wanna get into that more. I just wanna, you know, give back to the people that have supported me. You guys hit me up a lot in messages, Instagram and Facebook and stuff. And I try to reply to your stuff. I try to listen to the bands, give critiques and all that stuff, but we're gonna find a way to do a little bit better this year. And, you know, I wanna say shout out to my JST family that I have been with for the last five years. I've been here for five years, people. It's crazy to think about. But yeah, I've been here five years and they all were really happy for me too, knowing that I don't have this financial burden anymore, especially with what it is that I'm focused on right now. So yeah, just take an evaluation and uh, see where you're at in life. And also just kind of check your, uh, your spending habits. If you're buying lots of hardware gear and you're not making that money back, get rid of that stuff. Does it make any sense? You really want that sound, that analog sound, go online and what's that thing called access analog? Go use that and run some stuff through real quick. Do not sit here and spend $3,000 on a compressor and $2,000 on a color box and $3,000 on a pair of distressors and 3,000. Like, dude, this stuff starts adding up and it's crazy. But that's it. I wanna thank you guys for all the support. Just want you to know I couldn't have done this without you and I'm gonna be doing a lot more this year. And I hope you are too. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you only have to do it one time. And tap that bell for notification so when a video drops, you know the location. Until next time, my friends, I'll catch you later.